If I had an unlimited amount of money and I was about to die, I know, what cars would I buy? Find out straight after this. Hey there guys, it's Alan at AM Details here and last night I asked you guys to give me some questions on Instagram so that I can do them for you live in a Q&A. I have a list of questions here that Scott and I have written out. I'm not entirely sure what's on here, so it's gonna be a bit quick fire. Bear with me, here we go. Miles Drive, will you be at Waxdock this year and any other trips down south? Yes, whether I'm working for G-Technic or whether I'm gonna come down and be me, I'm coming to Waxdock. Any other down south shows that are related to detailing, I don't think so, but I will be trying to make it down for the Fueltopia bash hopefully make a couple of the barrel sprints or Gymkhana grids to support Luke. But detailing wise, yes, I'll be at Waxdock. No G-Technic have not got in touch with me yet. So I might be down as me or I might be helping out on their stand. Up next, Supreme Detail, but also Zach Hamilton asked a similar question. What are your tips for pressure washing engine bays? Okay guys, my tips on this are take a step back. Modern engine bays and most engine bays are designed so that a mechanic can be in there when it's raining to work on the engine. So take a step back guys. You just want to use the pressure washer to mist and get the area wet. All the cleaning should be done in your chemical and agitation. And the only reason you're using the pressure washer is to get rid of that residue. I personally think it is actually safer to use that light misting than it is to go over with an open hose or with a jug of water because that is then forcing a large flow of water into the engine bay rather than a gentle mist just getting rid of all your chemical residue. After that, if you can, give it a blow dry and check out Jim's top tip. I'll link it up here somewhere, guys, to his latest vlog and to the actual bit where he shows you a cool tip of blow drying your dressing on engine bays. It's quite cool. D Duffy D. My snow foam has nearly ran out, excuse me, but I am thinking of swapping it with TFR instead. Should I change or just use both products? I'm not entirely sure how to answer that because there are different things. And then for example, here we use APC, also a citrus cleaner. So it's all about what are you comfortable with doing in your routine, guys. It doesn't matter the product, do you want to do it? A lot of people out there say snow foam does nothing. A lot of people out there say citrus cleaner is where it's at. Here at AM Details, this is what we say. Customer is paying us to do a service. I have priced rinsing, APC rinsing, snow foam rinsing. The reason I do it in that order is I believe citrus cleaners, like majority of the world are there, and this is where it gets a bit diluted, I feel, clean more than snow foams. Fact. But they're fast acting. So if you can get on there, use an APC to get the majority of the dirt off that's initially on there and the quick pass around the car, then when you're spraying snow foam on, you can leave it on for a longer dwell time, that great word that detailers have made up, or a longer time on your car to work on the stuff the APC couldn't get off. Thus, you're removing even more dirt. Yes, at home, you might want to use one or the other. And in that case, you know what? Probably APC is going to be the way for you and not snow foam as good as it looks because it does cut a bit more. But I'm getting paid here to get the car as clean as possible, as safely as possible before it comes inside. So we do all three steps. TFRs, snow foams, APCs, as long as you're using them at the manufacturer's dilutions, they're going to be safe, guys. So have a play, have a dabble. That is the joy of detailing. Up next, David Oxford, I think. Will you be doing machine polishing how-tos? Okay, cool. So here at AM Details, I'm starting to roll out the training packages where you can come and see us here, the chemical range, and a very basic of machining training class, guys. I'm not there yet thinking I'm at the place where I'm able to train because at that level of machine polishing, because training is a complicated thing. You need to know how to train, never mind just knowing the subject. So I'm working on that one. But yes, online I'm about to do a whole load of video how-tos, and in that will be the basics of machine polishing as well. So fingers crossed they'll be coming soon. Keep an eye out for those. Jack Durbridge, hope I've pronounced that right. Durbridge, hope I've pronounced that right, my good man. What inspired you to create the AM Details brand <laughs> and where did it begin? Uh, inspiring me to do the brand would have probably been the passion in how it began, which was crashing my first car. Crashed my Renault Clean Oak clean into a lamppost, had the Air Force painters paint it, and obviously they're used to painting aircraft, not cars, so the finish wasn't quite there. So I studied online. Back then it was Autopia.net in America, and I imported over a Porter cable, practiced in a motor club. I was very privileged that we had a motor club in the Air Force, so I had a four-poster ramp to put the car on, have a go, well heated, 
and learned from there, going back and forth in detailing world, Utopia.net, and at the time I was on Cleosport.net, learning from people on there and picking it up. Then when I got posted up here in the Air Force, woo, forward a few more years, so at 18 I was 21, 22 when I got diagnosed, I think. I got diagnosed with Crohn's and told I was going to be leaving the Air Force. Up here I was doing it, some people were interested, and just like everyone else out there that tries it, you end up doing friends, friends, cars, friends, families, friends, cars, and insurance was required. So I started part-time. Started in a little tiny shed at the bottom of an airfield, and then when I finally left the Air Force, we looked for this unit and found Unit 5, and this March we've been here five years. So what inspired me to do the AM Details brand? Just the passion for doing it. Although I will tell you this one thing. The passion for detailing is what made me start this company. I knew very little in business. Just what I knew when I was doing my engineering degree, guys. So remember, when you're going into this, join something that's going to help you learn about business, your local business gateway, your local chamber, something along that line. Because you might be great at your craft, great at your hobby. But to do a business, you also need to be great at business and mix the two together. So that's my top tip to you guys. And I hope that helped to answer your question. Uh, I think this is Luke uh, Awidi, Awidi, so sorry. Uh, after four to six months has passed with your chosen wax, what's the best way to reapply it? Uh, by applying it? <laughs> no. So four to six months has passed and you want to apply your wax. By then, generally, you've probably picked up a lot of contamination as well, guys. So just start from the beginning. Decontaminate your car, clay your car, polish it to a point where you're wanting to polish it. You might not need to and then reapply your wax. But simply guys, if you've got a wax on there and you're happy, and you're not overly bothered about the little bit of tar you've got on there, etc., then just make sure your car is nice and clean, and then you can reapply your wax whenever you want. But ideally, in the perfect world, you want to decontaminate your car before you are putting any protection on there. But exactly what's happening when you're doing that quick AM seal top up, or when you're doing that quick detailer top up, is you are protecting over the contamination anyway. As long as you're happy, and as long as the car is easy to maintain, then who is anyone else to give you some criticism on that? But ideally, take everything off, because it's probably majority bonded on there. Start from the beginning, reapply. You get a bit more longevity out of your product doing it that way as well. Weebs ask the questions, any plans to bring out a product similar to the likes of Gion Wet Coat? Anyone in the local area or anyone in the sample group would have probably have played with Magic Pink stuff, was the code name we've been using for it over the past couple of years, and it is slowly getting there, guys. Please do remember, we're only a team of three and a small product tester group. Finding time to develop products, get the feedback, go back, develop products, get the feedback, go back, takes time. The product is there. We have had one out for about a year or two. A lot of people have been using it. Is it going to come out anytime soon, Weebs? No, we're not quite there yet, and we're focusing our attention on another area that we want to cover first. But yes, something is coming. I have noticed there's been a boom recently of spray boosters or na nano boosters or hydro boosts. So we've been working on something for a while, but it's not there yet, and we're not going to launch something soon. So go and check out the other brands if that's what you're looking for, guys. Or AM Detailer through a snow foam lance works really well, or using it excuse me, during your drying stages will also, you know, give back the hydrophobic effect, add a little bit of protection and ease your drying, guys. Last questions on this one. Random last question from Tati Min. And it is, if you were told you had a month to live, it's a bit of a grim question, isn't it? And ultimately, and, oh, and unlimited money, sorry, what car would you buy first and why? Well, if I only had roughly 30 days to live, I'd probably go out and buy 30 cars or one or two every day and drive them and find out. But I suppose if you want to do the clever answer, I would probably buy stuff that was going to be worth money. So when I pass, mm. my family could make more money on this unlimited amount of money I magically have only when I'm dying in my last month. But if you want to ask me what my favorite cars are, uh, I've always had a passion for the Loud and Larry Lamborghinis. So I would probably go out there and buy an Aventador, have a play with that. I really like watching them YouTube videos where you see people with V10 R8s and the Bolt 2 turbos on there. Recently getting into the drifting market, I'm really enjoying watching them guys. So maybe I wouldn't go and buy, but I would definitely go and see if the guys would take me out in some of their incredible builds. These things are insane guys. Ultimate on the road car for me and the family would probably be going down the route of a big Mercedes, a big Q7 or a Range Rover Sport. And for a toy car, I really like the Jaguar XFR guys. You can fit the family in, supercharged V8, some people call it an old man's car. I think it's a powerhouse and a complete sleeper. But yeah, big loud Lambo as well. And that's it, guys. Thank you very much. I hope these have uh, been 
interesting questions and interesting answers for you all. So quickly, I'm just going to do the last little snap thing for the outro. There it is. And fingers crossed, guys, over here will be a subscribe button. If you want to see more Q&As like this, more of our car care vlogs or the weekly vlogs, then please do subscribe. Hit the little bell and you'll be notified. And over here, we have two videos chosen just for you.